Native Hawaiians established systems that allowed them to thrive. The introduction of outside influences brought about major changes that disrupted their way of life. Our traditional Hawaiian healing practices, these oihana have been threatened, they have been endangered systematically over time, right? We can trace this back to the 1850s, we can trace this through the 1860s, um, at the turn of the century, there are these different uh, times in our history where these practices weren't, um, they weren't accepted. Not only weren't they accepted, but they weren't uh, lawful to do under this uh, settler colonial state. The realities of our traditional healing practices really went underground for a good, uh, 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 several decades and is at that point now where we're beginning to come out and it's very recent when you when, when you talk about our traditional healings being around in the community being accessible that is very recent we're talking like early 70s um, you have families at that time that had when the, the couple system had um, had had taken place it affected our healing practices and so and then throughout time also you also had various laws that were placed upon the healing practices you had barriers that were that were happening um, when that couple system broke and and fragmented our our, our practices you, you no longer had a, a a unified working system anymore it went into the families and so certain individualistic families really took it upon themselves to cultivate it just within their homes and it's not into yeah around the 70s maybe late 60s early 70s where you have individuals stepping forth to begin again like the story of Lonopuha teaching and, and, and teaching within our communities at that core um, of ma'i, it's, it's first an imbalance, right? But that the equal to that, it's pairing, right? Because we're so, we're so balanced, right? In our opposites, in our parallels, and the full paradigm is always balanced in our beliefs. Um, and so the balance to that is our ola, right? And so um, as I'm exploring, you know, these concepts of ma'i um, and really bringing back those names, um, and understanding the ways in which our sicknesses were classified through, you know, through Hawaiian ike, through, you know, ike ku'una, it seeks to reconstruct what those ancestral practices were, a very rigid forms of, uh, to me, it's Hawaiian, it's, it's Hawaiian science, right? It's Hawaiian medicine. Um, and so you're looking at very, very refined ways of um, performing observations, of uh, seeking assessment in order to reach a diagnosis. Our ancestors, at the time of contact with Westerners, was a very healthy, robust population. When they arrived, the estimated population of Native Hawaiians in 1778 is now believed to be about 650 to 700,000 Native Hawaiians in these islands, in the Pai'aina. Now that is more than the current number of Native Hawaiians, which is roughly 250,000 Native Hawaiians in Hawaii. which. And if you add the Hawaiians on the U.S. continent, then you're reaching 530,000. Still not reaching the numbers that were pre-contact or during the dawn of contact. So that's all of us a sign of a robust, healthy population on the rise. Um, you know, we lived in isolation from the rest of the world. We didn't have the infectious diseases you saw in other parts of the country that decimated the populations. Uh, but with the introduction of uh, foreigners, Westerners to our, our shores, came these infectious diseases that decimated our population, for which our ancestors had no natural immunity to ward off. So you saw the infectious diseases decimate the population from roughly 650,000 in 1778 to barely 30, between 35 and 40,000 by 1893 at the time of the illegal overthrow of our, of our 
Ali, yeah, Ali Okolani. That's a that's a greater what ninety five percent decrease in the population. Partly, you know, mainly due to infectious diseases, but certainly due to the kaumaha that our people are experiencing, that really made them susceptible to these diseases and other things because of the drastic changes that were happening to them in the eighteen hundreds. So you know, the question is. How was the health and well-being of our kupuna? They were great prior to contact. Um, and I always use that as the baseline for us, what we can be. We often use European Americans as the baseline to achieve health equity. And if we get closer to them, we can consider the gap closed, right? But I say even they are not the, uh, the benchmark we should be aspiring to. So we really, sh we really should be looking at our kupuna. So contact brings in, in addition to 90% of the population dying due to um, infectious disease, we're left with a 10% of the population who is constantly in fear of survival because we've watched, you know, nine out of 10 of our relatives die, most babies are dying, influenza, smallpox, all the diseases that came in with the Western world. And our people are hit with that fear of survival. Um, and that fear of having resources when we didn't have any of that before. And that fear causes a lot of that anxiety and that hole. And that's that hole that we're constantly struggling to fill right now. Um, and we medicate, we fill that hole with whatever we can, whether it's food that is not good for us, whether it's substances, whether it's children before we're really able to afford to take care of them properly. We are filling that empty space that could completely be filled with all of this. You know, and so that's really, a, it's a mind switch. It's a change in thinking, a paradigm switch that we would have to go, you know, maybe I don't need all those things. Maybe I just need to be at the beautiful beaches that are still here and for us, you know, that because of customary and practice laws are never going to be owned by anybody, that we will be able to engage in those spaces with our children. We just need to play and change our paradigm of what it means to be healthy because our ancestors knew how to do that and we have just maybe forgotten. You can't help but think when we're addressing that emotional entanglement, when we're addressing the, um, you know, that, that mental health, that strife and that turmoil, we're absolutely going back to that time. And we're, we're offering, um, I think, treatments and remedies um, that hit to the core of where, um, you know, where I think many of us believe that our historical and cultural trauma really stems from. This is a traditional Hawaiian health system um, that they have left for us to rebuild. And so if we don't have access to our natural and cultural resources, if our land isn't healthy, then we as Kanaka, there's, there's no way we can continue to win these battles individually, symptom by symptom, right? That doesn't work in, in our Hawaiian framework of thinking. We have to also simultaneously be healing the aina if we're going to heal the lahui. The lahui is all of us who identify as Native Hawaiians and wish to be included in this collective. If you are part of the lahui, you are part of the nation. You are part of that which moves forward Hawaiian culture and Hawaiian view and Hawaiian outlook. So the lahui is all of us if you wish to be.